Hi, it's Matt. Um, I want to talk about help desk services uh, for facilities management. I've been in facilities management and asset management uh, for over a decade and I'm very well aware that a lot of the costs associated with managing buildings, facilities, accommodation, um, anything that involves uh, management of some kind of assets has a lot of extra uh, manpower associated with it which is often behind the scenes but doesn't need to, to be necessarily in the same country. Um, a prime, prime example of that is when I was working in the Middle East, most of the administration work I was seeing getting done for um, projects that are ongoing plus help desk is mainly done by Filipinos from the places that I visited and worked in. Now, the bizarre thing with that is there is a cost not only associated with having people so far from home, but also the fact is that most people would rather work in the Philippines if you're from the Philippines. Um, so you could actually save a lot of money by outsourcing it back to the Philippines, even if you're using the same staff. Um, because I know from being there myself that accommodation isn't cheap, and then you have the commute issues because like Saudi Arabia, for example, uh, women aren't allowed to drive, so there's going to be logistical problems, as well as um, food is often free. Um, for a lot of companies. So there's all these added costs which you wouldn't have to do if the people were actually in their home countries. Now you probably think, well, why, why isn't it already being done? Well, that's what I'm thinking. Why isn't more being outsourced to places like the Philippines? Um, especially when you've got people like myself here that come from facilities management. I've worked on uh, projects varying from $1 million up to $80 million, um, developing them from scratch. So it's not like you, you, you've got people that don't know what they're doing. Um, because there's myself, but I'm sure there's other people from the asset and facilities management uh, niche that are already in many of these countries that can provide cost-effective solutions. Because I know what one of my primary uh, roles when I'm working um, on asset management, procurement, and contract assessment is the, the key thing that all our clients are after is cost reduction. Now the main cost reduction you can have is labor cost. Because Equipment-wise, a lot of the companies are already running at their minimum because you have maintenance regimes. You have this certain amount of equipment that you need to carry out those tasks. You know, if you're ordering your uh, air filters for your air conditioning units, they are going to be done every three months, six months, annually depending on where the air conditioning is and your, primarily your budget. But at the end of the day, you can only cut that back so far. Now, facilities management, if you outsource the help desk for out of hours, even just out of hours, um, not even taking your full day shift away, if you took the out of hours and put it back uh, to say BPL 24 hours to handle, you would find that we could actually save you money. And the thing is, you wouldn't need to worry about, oh, what about if there's some discrepancies or problems with, because your day shift would still manage to deal with the day-to-day -day issues um, which may need somebody on the ground. Um, generally you don't though. Uh, if, if <laughs> you would only, I mean, you would only need limited amounts of people actually in the country 
dealing with the help desk services. You know, you, you'll have obviously your administration, but a remote printer can do most of it. If the person's already trained in um, administration for your help desk and linked with your um, facilities management software, which could be anything, uh, uh, sorry, asset management software, which could be SAP or even down to Excel, um, where it's a very um, simple service where most of them will actually have remote login via browsers. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff there which cost effective wise would be better outsourcing. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because I also know in the UK the after 5pm uh, issue when I was an engineer, um, I, I mean for me it was never an issue because I like that all the overtime so I was normally covering both m and &E and fabric um, and taking um, an extra couple of hundred pounds a week for just being on call plus, plus all the call outs. But I know myself from, even from an engineer's perspective, that having somebody there 24 7, because a lot of the out of hours, because the contracts are cut away so much to save money, it isn't cost effective to have somebody in the UK for many contracts for out of hours solely for one contract. Now, what that means though is that when a client has um, one of the biggest problems I used to have in the UK was uh, normal break ins at, at like 1 2 o'clock in the morning, if the client can't get hold of the person in charge of the help desk, then there's a problem um, because what happens is the engineers aren't called then you end up with nobody responding to uh, for 24 hour blazing, uh, lock changes um, the, the, the important tasks that maintain the business to get it operational for first thing in the morning there, that is quite a major issue for contracts now, if you outsource it to us, you're actually in our day shift. Um, so you're not, it's not really a problem. Um, on top of that, we're used to working night and day. Uh, we do a lot of work in the US, um, so we're normally dialing from about 1 a.m. here. But also during the day, we're working on transcription and other services. Um, as well as uh, data entry, data processing, and other tasks associated with um, document management. So, for us, it's not a big problem to add the extra services. But also, because I have a lot of experience with help desks, I already know there's a market for this. I already know that it's not a case of outsourcing but simply seeing BPO 24 hour as an extension of your business. Because a lot of these things are not about uh, taking jobs away from the UK or US or whatever, but actually viability. These jobs would not exist. Um, for example, if you were doing call out for one of the companies I work for in the UK, you would get 100 pounds for being on call. Now, a hundred pounds just means that somebody's got a mobile phone in their pocket. So, doesn't mean they're going to answer it, doesn't mean they're available, doesn't mean they can hear it when they're out with friends, or it doesn't mean that at 2 a.m. they're going to answer the phone. But if the call comes here, it is still viable at a hundred pounds. And there's a reason why it's viable because people are already working on other campaigns. So you could actually have the um, contract tied in as an emergency service where if you had four contracts we would manage all four for you um, because we actually have a team here available. So even if they're, you're not hiring them on uh, an hourly basis even on those, uh, say, for 400 pounds a week, 
you would actually have people available to not only respond to those calls, but also that we could actually get the right people to um, respond to the locations where they're needed, which is a big thing with client relations. Um, I remember working for the Ministry of Defense where we had a buzz bar uh, it come loose and there'd been a short across the neutral which resulted in a large amount of computers blowing up overnight. Now, the Ministry of Defense were not concerned about the um, damage. Their only complaint was there wasn't computers ready to start first thing in the morning. Now, I'm not talking one or two computers, I'm talking about 160. Um, first thing is, we couldn't replace them even if we wanted to because they're, they're all very specific for the tasks that are needed. But if that was in a, another environment, we could probably have worked around it. Um, because I know, for example, if they had an IT company that was available 24-7, I'm sure they would have um, pulled their finger out and got, got what they could there overnight if it was part of our remit to do that. Um, it wasn't. It, 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 I think it was just more of a frustration that uh, all these things got blown up by actual design fault on the bus bar system. Um, which was getting handled by the insurance. But at the same time, there was a lot of frustration saying, well, why can't you um, I've got all these PCs here in them? Um, but that's a prime example of we, we couldn't do any, go any further with it because the MOD side that wouldn't actually respond to the calls. But we did our bit. We had our engineers out there. Um, the faults were found, photographed, and the, the actual building was made safe and workable in the morning. It was just the computer systems couldn't be replaced in such a short period of time. Um, but that all comes with having a help desk that functions and is available 24-7. And bpl24hour.com can provide those help desk services. And it's not just for um, facilities management. Asset management is another key element to um, facilities management where the assets of buildings and facilities for things like air conditioning, all the way down to like water filters and um, computer systems, all have to be not only allocated but monitored and kept up to date with their maintenance, servicing, repairs, and having that also outsourced. So they, you may want the management internal, but the actual processing of all the documents and making sure everything is methodically um, kept up to date could be outsourced. Because these are all key elements which become very expensive very quickly on contracts. Um, although there's budgets allocated for them, uh, you could, for example, take a contract for three to five years and initially it was budgeted at four million dollars. Now, those four million dollars were based on the original facilities, but the company may have added uh, within those facilities another 2,000 air conditioning units. Those have added an extra cost not only on the unit's maintenance uh, for the, the maintenance staff and also the uh, equipment cost and replenishment, but also all the paperwork, uh, paperwork, logistics, and the asset management because not only have they got to be added to the system, they also have to have all their um, program adapted, asset tag, blah, blah, blah which were never built into the original system, which can be a problem depending how the contract's built, because you may not have the extra budget to turn around and go, okay, we've got all this extra equipment, we'll just add it in there because we can afford it, but if you can outsource some of this workload, 
you can find that you're still within budget. Um, I think I whittled on a bit about uh, asset management, asset management, and the help desk services. But it's asset management, help desk services, and uh, facilities management are the key areas that I come from. They're, those are the things that I see being key areas for business development in the BPO industry over the next few years, because it's the the bits of the industry, uh, bits of the FM industry, which are extremely costly um, for labor, and um, and like I said, like the out of hours stuff, a lot of people aren't keen to do it anyway, and it also it's not viable. You know, giving somebody like fifty to a hundred pounds to be on call twenty four seven for seven days, you're not always guaranteed to get hold of them, uh, and often it's more about uh, giving it to them under duress, <laughs> you know, rather than them wanting to do it. So we could actually find a solution for that within BPL 24 Outcome. Okay, thanks for listening.